أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد عن خطى الإيمان دربنا درب قويم دربنا درب قويم بالهدى القرآني أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد عن خطى الإيمان دربنا درب قويم دربنا درب قويم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا في والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فعوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا نسحوا لله ورسوله وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الدين النصيحة قيل لمن قال لله ولرسوله ولكتاب الله ولعمة المسلمين ولعمتهم رواه البخاري أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام The verse of the Quran which I have mentioned it is a very beautiful verse of Surah At-Tawbah which is verse 91 and in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he speaks about a very very important trait that is farz and compulsory for every single Muslim to have. If a Muslim does not have that trait, then his iman in the sight of Allah is not acceptable. His Islam in the sight of Allah is not acceptable. And while speaking about the believers who are called and known as believers in the Holy Quran, and while speaking about the Muslims who are known and recognized as the Muslims in the sight of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicates uh, to that trait when he says uh, they will be true believers, they will be good believers only إِذَا نَصَحُوا لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ When they are sincere to Allah and they are sincere to the Messenger of Allah. What this ayah speaks about, it is being sincere to Allah and sincere to the Messenger of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says, that when they are sincere to him and they are sincere to the messenger of Allah then they will be people who are known as al-muhsineen good people good muslims good mu'min if they are not sincere and they are not true to their words and their statement then their iman is not acceptable in the sight of Allah and sincere, it's something we have to understand. Sincere, when we speak about being sincere, well, the opposite of that is being insincere. If you are not sincere, <coughs> it means you are not genuine. If you are not sincere, it means you are not true, so you are false. So if a person believes in Allah, but he's not genuine, it means he's false. If he believes in Allah and is not true, then there is no iman in his heart because he's not true to Allah. This is why Allah has made that as a compulsory trait, a compulsory trait that every single believer, they must have. That every Muslim, you and I, we must be true to Allah. We must be true to the messenger of Allah. We must be sincere to Allah. And if we look at it, my beloved brothers and sisters, the reason that we find ourselves very negligent in our duties, the reason that we find ourselves not doing what we ought to do as Muslims, how many Muslims in our own families will perform salat five times a day? We are negligent in that. And that salat is from among the first thing that Allah will question about on the day of judgment. If you are bad in that, you are bad in everything else. The first and foremost duty for a Muslim 
and responsibility upon every single Muslim. It is to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by performing his salat or her salat, salat five times a day. That is the first duty. That duty has nothing to do with whether you are poor or you are rich. Whether you are sick or you are healthy. Whether you can undertake a journey or you cannot undertake a journey. So all those conditions that are connected for giving zakat, going for the hajj, or observing the month of Ramadan and fast, they are not connected to salah. So much so, that if the individual is sick, salat is still compulsory. You cannot use water, you are allowed to make tayammum with stone and clay. If you cannot stand, you will sit. And if you cannot sit, you will lie down and perform your salat. It is not exempted. It is not excused. To that extent, if you are not healthy, you can delay the fast. <laughs> If you are a musafir, you can delay the fast. Subhanallah. If you don't have money, you don't have to give zakat, but you still have to perform salat. If you don't have money and you do not have health, you don't have to perform hajj, but you have to perform salat. If you have money and you do not have health, then you don't have to perform the hajj. You may send somebody, but you still have to perform salat. Salat is not excused at all. It is not exempted at all from anybody. But the point I was making, how many Muslims, how many of us we perform our salat five times a day? And if we ask the question as to why we are not doing it, why we are not doing the things when we are told that this is compulsory and that is compulsory and once you are a Muslim, you have to do it. The reason is that probably we are not sincere to Allah. That's where it goes back to. If we were sincere to Allah, we will do it. If we were sincere to Allah, we will obey Him. We are not genuine in our recitation of the kalima. We are not genuine in our statements that we make to Allah. This is why we find ourselves openly disobeying Allah, intentionally leaving the things that are compulsory and we have no fear for anyone. We have become so bold to disobey Allah, not only privately, but publicly we disobey Allah as if Allah is not looking at us. As if there is no barzak and grave for us. As if there is no day of judgment for us. As if there is no jahannam in the hereafter. Human beings and the believers, they have become so bold that they openly disobey Allah. They have no remorse, no regret in their heart. And most of them do not even make tawbah to Allah before they go back to Allah. فَإِنَّ لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ It is the actions of the believers which is in the majority that has the ummah where it is today. We are being kicked from pillar to post because we have no strength. Our strength, the strength for the Muslim ummah, the strength for Islam does not come from our bodies. The strength comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The power comes from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most powerful. He can make things happen and he can stop things from happening. But what we fail in our duties, how can Allah help us? How would he help us when we fail in our duties? So this is why this sifat of being sincere to Allah is something that we always have to reflect on. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, because when Allah says about the believers, Ida nasahu lillahi wa rasulihi, that the believers will only be true believers and accepted believers when they are sincere to Allah and His Rasul. Nasahu comes from the word nasiha. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, in the hadith recorded by Imam Bukhari, alayhi rahma, he said to the sahabas and he said to all of us that this nasiha is so important. It is the basis, it is the backbone, it is the foundation of your religion of Islam. If you are not sincere, you are a liar. So don't even take the name of Islam if you are not sincere. So much so, he said, Adinu an nasiha. Religion is sincerity. Deen is nasihat. Deen is being sincere. 
if you have no sincerity, you have no deen. Because deen is sincerity. A deen o an nasiha. Deen is an nasiha. It is being sincere. Being sincere now, you can be sincere to your friends. You have to be sincere. You have to be sincere to your parents. You have to be sincere to everybody around you. So the Sahabas, when they heard that the Prophet ﷺ said, Ad-Dinu an nasiha Islam, your religion, it is about sincerity. It is sincerity. It demands that you be sincere. They said, Liman ya Rasulullah? Sincere to whom ya Rasulullah? Sincere to who? Who are, who are those people that we are required to be sincere to? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then highlighted all those people and who or what we have to be sincere to. He says, Lilla, you have to be sincere first of all to Allah. You can be true to men and false to Allah. You can be genuine to people but, but not genuine to Allah. You can be sincere to people and insincere to Allah. Then you are a false man. Your first duty is towards Allah and then other people. Not other people and then Allah. Allah comes first in your life. In everything you do, in everything you say, in every decision you make, in every good that you need to and want to do, Allah comes first. Not anything else. Not let me see what I can do first and when I have some time, then I'll give it to Allah. Give Allah His time first and then see the time remaining for your other duties. Allah comes first. And when we put Allah first, Allah will put us first. Allahu Akbar. This is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once said to Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and his cousin. He said, Ihfadillaha yahfaduka. You be mindful of Allah and Allah will be mindful and take care of you. Subhanallah. Ihfadillah. You be mindful of Allah. Tajiduhu amamak. You shall find Allah always in front of you. Subhanallah. Whenever you need help, Whenever you are in dif dif difficult situations, whenever the need arises that you will begin to call on Allah before you can call on Allah, He will be there to help you. He will take you out of your situations. He will make things easy for you. But that will come when you are mindful of Allah. Because if you are not mindful of Allah, Allah will not be mindful of you. You will call on Him a hundred times. You will call on him a thousand times, but he will not listen to your call because you are not mindful of him. Subhanallah. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Lilla, you must be sincere first of all to Allah, wali rasulihi, and you must be sincere to his messenger. You cannot be saying Muhammadur Rasulullah." With your tongue. You cannot be saying that you are a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We cannot be saying that he is our prophet and we don't care anything about him and his teachings and his practices. We are false in our statement. We are not being sincere. We can't do that. We can't be saying that. We can't make such a claim. But we have nothing to do with his teachings. We don't want to follow him. We don't want to obey him. We are being insincere. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wali kitabihi. And that you should be sincere to the book of Allah. You should be sincere to the Holy Quran in other words. And then he said, Wali a'immatil muslimin. And you are required to be sincere to the leaders of the Muslims, to the rulers of the Muslims, to the governors of the Muslims, those Muslims who are placed above you on a level of authority and they have become your ruler or they have become your leader. You need to be sincere to them. You cannot be false to them. You need to be genuine to them. Well, you are to him. And it is compulsory that you be sincere and genuine to all Muslims around you. Now, 
This is the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And everybody can give his own, in, own interpretation as to what does it mean to be sincere to Allah or sincere to the messenger of Allah or sincere to the book of Allah or sincere to your leaders and rulers or sincere to the common Muslims. This is why the commentators of Sahih al-Bukhari, the book of uh, the compilation recorded by Imam Bukhari has given some beautiful commentary on this. And they have given a beautiful explanation on this beautiful hadith. Because this beautiful hadith touches a foundational principle of our Iman and our Islam. Which is to be sincere to Allah and His Rasul. If that, if, let's look, we can understand. If you perform salat and you are not sincere, your salat is not accepted. If you give zakat and you are not sincere, your zakat is not accepted. If you fast for the entire month of Ramadan and you were not sincere, your entire month of Ramadan is not accepted. If you perform the hajj with your thousands of dollars, with all the hardships and sufferings you had to undergo, and you performed it and you made du'as day and night in the Kaaba, and you did so many things, but you were not sincere in any one action. Nothing is accepted. From that we can understand how important it is to be sincere. Being sincere is the backbone. It is the foundation. It is that upon our deen rests. Our religion rests upon that. This is why the Prophet ﷺ said, Ad-deenu an-nasiha. Your religion is based and founded on sincerity. You need to be sincere in everything you do. You need to be sincere. We need to be sincere. Sincerity to Allah. He said, Lillah. We need to understand what it is to be sincere to Allah. Because each and every one of us, we must do it. I need to be sincere to Allah. You need to be sincere to Allah. So what does it mean to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The commentators of Sahih al-Bukhari in the shara and commentary of their kitabs, they have stated, As for being sincere to Allah and having nasiha or taking nasiha from Allah, it is for ma'anaha. So the meaning is, Yarji'u ilal iman shirk first and foremost is that if you are sincere to Allah your creator you need to believe in him that's the first thing nothing comes before belief first and foremost is your belief in Allah you believe in him shirk and you negate shirk from Allah you negate assigning and associating partners to Allah that you as a Muslim should never ever commit shirk. Whether it is committing shirk in the being of Allah or in the qualities of Allah or in the ibadah and the worship of Allah. If you perform salat and you perform salat for the sake of Allah but you are performing salat to be seen by other people because you want people to talk good about you and you want people to remember you with good words to say who used to perform so much salat then you have committed shirk in the worship of Allah you have joined partners in worshiping him while you were supposed to worship him alone for his sake alone you have worshiped him for the sake of other things and other people that is shirk so shirk is not only the fact that you worship two or three gods Shirk exists in the qualities also. If the qualities that belong to Allah, you give it to any other being, you are committing shirk with Allah. Allah is the only being who sees you 24 hours a day. You can go beneath the seven layers of the earth, he's going to see you. He will know you. He is watching you, he's watching me. He watches his entire creation Every single one of them, wherever you are, Allah knows you, Allah sees you, Allah hears you, Allah knows what is in the heart. If any Muslim puts that attribute to any human being, be it an angel or a prophet, he has committed shirk with Allah. He has taken Allah's beautiful attribute and applied it to another human being, which is shirk. Allah alone knows the unseen. The Holy Quran clearly says, La ya'lamul ghayba illa Allah. No one knows the future and the unseen except Allah alone. 
accept Allah alone. For anybody to believe that so and so knows what will happen in the future or what will happen after one month or one year, this is attributing Allah's quality to another being besides Allah and that is shirk. There are many shades of shirk. There are many forms of shirk. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us to beware of shirk. Because he says shirk can come into your heart and you wouldn't even know about it. It will come in in such a subtle manner. Shirk entering your heart is likened to a black ant walking on a black wall on the darkest period of the night. Can you see it? You can't see it. The prophet says that's how shirk enters your heart. It comes in, it's there, but you can't recognize it. That's why we have to always be conscious of what we have in our hearts. We have to always check our beliefs. Where are our beliefs going? Our beliefs are not based on emotions. Never. Your belief can never be based on your emotions. Your beliefs could never be based on how you feel. Your beliefs can never be based on the dreams and the visions you have. Our belief is based on the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Anytime anyone steps outside the Quran and the Sunnah, you are treading paths that are prohibited. Your belief must come from the Book of Allah. That's why Allah sent the book. To teach us what we have to believe in. You can concoct things in your mind about Allah. You can bring in things in your mind about Allah. Allah is like this and Allah is like that. And probably he's looking like this and he's looking like... No, 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 we can't do that. And allow your mind to waver and roam all over the place. No. So the first and foremost thing is to believe in Allah... And to negate shirk from Allah. Never ever. To associate partners with Allah in any form or fashion. And in any manner. Whether it is to worship two people and two beings. Whether it is to put Allah's attribute in another being. Or whether it is to believe that besides Allah. Other people have the ability to give life or take life or give cure or take away sickness. Allah alone. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Allahumma, O oh Allah, anta shafi, you alone is the cure. La shifa'a, illa shifa'aka. There is no cure except the cure that comes from you, O oh Allah. You alone is the cure. We as Muslims have to be very, very careful because you see how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described the crawling black ant just like that shirk enters. And you think about something and you believe it's good. <laughs> you believe it's good. But you always have to measure that with Allah's book. And the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the only way we're going to know whether we're on the right or whether we're on the wrong. Because besides that we have no other criterion to determine what is right and wrong. This is why. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is leaving this world. But he made sure and he left as a lasting, everlasting, permanent advice to the whole ummah. He says, Taraktu fikum amaraini. I am leaving, I am going ahead. But I leave two things behind for you. Lan tadillu ma tamasaktum bihima. Never ever you will go astray if you hold on to these things. But anytime you begin to leave them out, you're going to go astray. Kitab Allah wa sunnata nabihi, the book of Allah and the sunnah of his nabi. And my dear beloved brothers and sisters, if you want, we have done it. You check the history of every deviated people. From among those who consider themselves Muslims, you will find that the cause of deviation was in that hadith. They left the teachings of the Kitab of Allah and the Sunnah of His Nabi. You look at it. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam therefore told us, "You stay within, you are guided. You go outside, you are misguided." That's the end. So therefore, nasihat and being sincere to Allah is that we believe in Him. We never ever make shirk 
We never ever make shirk. In one beautiful tradition, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, remember an amal that is mentioned in many of the tafsir and commentaries of the Holy Quran, that whosoever, before they sleep, they read Surah Al-Kafirun, then through the blessings of the recitation of Surah Kafirun, Allah will protect that person from shirk. Because Surah Kafirun was revealed to negate and repel and destroy shirk. So whosoever recites Surah Kafirun, the Prophet wasallam said, before he sleeps, it's in a hadith, recorded by many commentators of the Holy Quran, Imam Qurtubi, Imam you know, uh, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, those famous commentaries, that that's a very, very good practice. Because as the Prophet wasallam is saying, sometimes something can enter your heart and you are not aware that it's there. And that thought in your heart can make you do things that are wrong and you don't even know about it. So we always have to beg Allah to protect us from shirk. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said, he says about an nasihat lillah, being sincere to Allah. The commentators of the hadith they have stated that besides, subhanallah, believing in Allah, you have to ensure that at all times you do not believe in any such thing. That brings about defection and defects, that brings about defects in the being of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to refrain from that. Tanzihullahu ta'ala, making Allah pure. In other words, many people say things about Allah, a simple thing. The Quran says, and they say Allah has begotten a son. So if you say Allah has a son like a human being, then you are put into Allah human attributes. And Allah is free from human attributes. So you have to ensure that you do not believe in any such thing. And put any such thing in your mind or your thought that brings about any defects in the zat and in the being or in the sifat of Allah. Also, if you are sincere to Allah, then they have mentioned being sincere to Allah means وَالْقِيَامُ بِطَاعَتِهِ To establish the obedience of Allah. If you believe in Allah, and if we are sincere to Allah, then it necessarily means that we have to obey Allah. That is clear. There is no doubt about that. There is no shak or shubha about that. If you are sincere, if I am sincere, what being sincere to Allah means you have to obey Allah. If we don't obey Allah, it affects our sincerity to Allah. It affects us in being sincere to Allah. Wal ijtinabu and ma'asiyatihi and being sincere to Allah, it means what? Staying away from disobeying Allah. Staying away from disobedience to Allah. Staying away from the haram. So as a Muslim now, we are ordered by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be sincere to Allah. What does it mean for us? That we always obey Allah. Because Alhamdulillah we believe in Allah. May Allah accept our Iman and our Islam. We believe in Islam. We believe in Allah. Alhamdulillah. What's the next step after that? To obey Allah. If we are sincere to Allah, we'll obey Allah. If we are sincere to Allah, we'll never ever find obedience to Allah, hardship in our life. We'll never find it burdensome in our life. Sometimes a person wants to do something and they're saying, oh, this thing is so hard and I can't do it and I can't get up in the morning for Fajr Salah and it's so difficult. If we are sincere to Allah, that will never come in our hearts and our mind. We will willingly do it because we are sincere to Allah and we are true to Allah. And if we are sincere and true to Allah, we will never disobey Allah. And if we disobey Allah, we will repent to Allah. We will always do the things such that we stay away from falling into haram, from falling into the prohibition. That will happen if we are sincere to Allah. They have stated, وَأَمَّا النَّصِيحَةُ لِكِتَابِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى And as for being sincere to the book of Allah, how are we to be sincere to the Qur'an? How are we to be sincere to the Quran? We are being told the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was asked who a person should be, who the Muslim should be sincere to, what they should be sincere to, he says you must be sincere to the book of Allah. How are we going to be sincere to the book of Allah? 
The scholars have mentioned, the commentators of Sahih al-Bukhari, they have stated, وَأَمَّا النَّسِيحَةُ لِكِتَابِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى As for being sincere to the book of Allah, it is فَالْإِيمَانُ It is first of all, to bring that faith and iman, بِأَنَّهُ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى لَا يَشْبَهُهُ شَيْءٌ مِّنْ كَلَامِ الْخَلْقِ That it is in its entirety the speech of Allah. That's not the speech of a human being. And it does not resemble the speech of a human being. And the speech of the human being does not resemble it. That's the first and foremost thing that every believer must believe in. That the Quran, it is the speech of Allah. It has been divinely sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not the words of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are directly, every single word that is there, from the beginning to end, it is the words of Allah. When you read the Quran, you are reading identically the words that were read by Jibreel alayhi salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you read the Quran, you are reading identically those words that are inscribed on Lawhul Mahfuz, the sacred tablets which are on the arsh of Allah. Subhanallah. That is what you are reading. You may have a book on the face of the earth, but what you read is from the heavens directly. There is no doubt about that. And if we only think about that, then our iman will increase in the book of Allah. And our qadr, and our love, and our respect, and appreciation to the book of Allah, it will be much more in our hearts. It will not just be a book. They have stated that, ثم تعظيمه, then being sincere to the book of Allah means you must respect the book. You can't treat it as any and any book. It is the holiest book on the face of the earth. It is the greatest book on the face of the earth. When sometimes the hadith says, when one ayah used to come down from the heavens, that used to be so powerful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala around Jibreel alayhi salam at times, he used to send over 70,000 angels to guard that one ayah that was coming from the heavens to the earth to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So much care was taken how can we treat this book like an ordinary book? How can we not show respect and ihtiram and love to the book? This is why Allah says in the Quran, this is such a holy book. لَا يَمُسُّهُ إِلَّا الْمُطَحَّرُونَ No one but the pure ones shall touch this book. Subhanallah. No one but the pure ones should touch the book. So when we are going to read the Quran and we want to hold the Quran and touch the Holy Quran based on the ayah, the fuqaha and the jurists have stated you need to have wuzu to touch it. And if you need ghusl and a bath, you need to take a bath. You can't be in a state of impurity and then hold the Quran and touch the Quran. Subhanallah, Allah himself says this is such a book that no person except the pure ones must touch it. So respect for the book is part of being sincere to Allah's book. Respect. Then, wala amalu bima fihi and making amal and practicing upon that which is in the book of Allah is being sincere. Allah has sent a book. We have to be sincere to the book. How do we be sincere? How are we going to be seen as if we are truthful in our belief in the book if we make amal on it? What's the sense in telling somebody I believe in this book and what the book has, you are not doing it? I mean, look at it. You are telling everybody, I believe in this book. You know, this is the greatest book. We Muslims are so happy and we Muslims are so fortunate. We have the greatest book in the face of the earth. And the person you are saying that to, are you practicing any part of the book in your life? You say, no, I'm sorry. But then what are you boasting and bragging about? You are false. You are insincere. Why brag and boast about our religion is so pure? Our religion is the only religion that teaches pure monotheism and tawheed. And we are not practicing our religion. Why are we bragging and boasting about it? means that we ourselves, it seems we are not convinced in the truthfulness of our deed. This is why we are not practicing if we had been, and if we were convinced, we will do everything that our deen tells us to do. So too, the Quran, we have to be sincere. We have to be true to the Quran. And being true to the Quran means whatever Allah has ordered us to do, there we do it. Whatever Allah has ordered us to stay away from, we have to stay away from it. This is being sincere. 
on one in one way if we say we love it and we believe in it and we respect it and we have it in high regards and you know it's such on a lofty status in the sight of Allah and our lives are not lived in accordance with it then probably we are not true in what we are saying we are insincere we are false in what we are saying because we are not even ready to make amal on the thing that we think and we believe it is the best and it is for us to make amal on subhanallah wa amma nasihatu li rasulihi the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says ad-dinu nasiha religion is to be sincere to allah to the book of allah and to the messenger of allah what does it mean to be sincere to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we say muhammadur rasulullah and in our utterance of the word muhammadur rasulullah it is saying we believe that muhammad is the final messenger i have taken him to be my nabi and my prophet among all the anbiyas that came on the first of the earth i have chosen him to be my prophet among all of them i will follow him i believe he is the last i believe he is the seal i believe his teachings they are teachings of guidance i will live my life in a court that is what we are saying when we say muhammadur rasulullah but what we are saying is this in our lives if it's not in our lives then we are not being sincere in our speech and our statement this is why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says you need to be sincere to the rasul of allah you need to be sincere to the nabi of allah so they have stated nasihat to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam being sincere to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fa tasdiquhu ala risalah first of all it is to believe that he came as a messenger of allah there should be no doubt in your mind about that there shouldn't be any doubt about oh, i wonder if he really came as a messenger i wonder if he was really a nabi that should never be there you should have that firm conviction in your heart that he indeed was a messenger of allah the mightiest messenger and the greatest rasul that came from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wal iman bi jami'i ma ja'a bihi and if you have to be sincere and we need to be sincere to the prophet we have to believe in every single thing that he brought from allah we can't deny anything whether what he said it conforms to our thinking and our logics and our reasoning or not we have to believe sometimes we read a hadith sometimes you hear a hadith in a sermon in a lecture in a bayan or you read it and you find what is being described it's so far fetched can that really happen can that happen this morning i was reading a hadith in the book of a hadith in which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says inna jahannamiya dar suhu misla uhud that a person who shall be sent in the fire of hell his molar tooth will be so big it will be huge like mount uhud hadith of the prophet so therefore anybody is listening say that can happen so big so huge when you see the molar tooth of a person it's so small and so big the prophet is saying that's not for us to go look into the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is speaking about matters of the hereafter and if we have to use our senses and our reasoning to try to justify and believe in everything then we will begin to de deny azab in the grave why because the first thing you will say is that that small place we filled it with with dirt all around how can the man sit up is there any space for angels and two angels will come where will they fit this man is dead how can he speak but the rasul hadith recorded by imam bukhari and imam muslim say you will speak the munkir and the nakir will come and you will sit up upright so it doesn't make sense thinking about how you will sit inshallah when you go there you will see how it occurs but right now we have to believe the scene is there but believing is here now so it is being sincere to the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam means we have to believe in every single thing that subhanallah the messenger of allah brought and live our lives in accordance to the practices and teachings that he had given to us and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke about he says nasihat being sincere to the leaders 
They ha the commentators have stated it means that you help those who are appointed as leaders over you. Leaders and rulers. That you help them in the work of deen. That you do not rebel against them. That you do not fight against them. And you obey them as long as they are on the part of deen that you obey them. And as for being sincere to all the other Muslims, then you have to be well wishes of the Muslims around you. You have to have good in your heart for them. You have to help them as much as possible. You have to be kind to them. You have to give them good counsel and good advice when it is needed. In this way, if we do that, then we are going to be sincere. We will be sincere to Allah. If we do these things, then we will be sincere to Allah. Sincere to the book of Allah, sincere to his messenger, sincere to the leaders and the rulers, and sincere to all the other Muslims. And this hadith is so important that Imam Bukhari mentioned a whole chapter only on this hadith. It's a hadith. Normally he will put hadith inside the chapter. But the topic of the chapter is religion, is sincerity. You need to be sincere because as I said, that's the backbone and foundation of our religion. If we are not sincere, we have nothing. But if we are sincere, then inshallah we will have everything in the sight of Allah and we will see it on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the quality of sincerity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us sincere believers and true believers so that we will do whatever the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had asked us to do. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi النحيد أبدا لا النحيد أبدا لا النحيد عن خط الإيمان دربنا درب قويم دربنا درب قويم بالهدى القرآن أبدا لا النحيد أبدا لا النحيد أبدا لا النحيد عن خط الإيمان دربنا درب قويم دربنا درب قويم بالهدى القرآن سائر في طريق الحق يا جند الله سائر في طريق الحق يا جند